Welcome to the theater of magic. Seven o'clock. It's magic. Eight o'clock. Hocus pocus. Nine o'clock. It's magic. Ten o'clock. Vanquish the chain. Eleven o'clock. You must break through. Midnight madness. Tiger saw. Mystifying. Unbelievable. Spectacular. The theater awaits. Welcome to the Theatre of Magic guys, my name is Greg and it's good to be back. I've got something <laughs> to show you today which I shouldn't be showing you. Um, <laughs> uh, what, what did I do this time? So I was just chilling out, relaxing, um, you know, just before I was sort of thinking about uh, getting ready. I had to actually pick up my daughter from 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 dancing in, in between before I w was going to go out. And I was I was lying on the bed and I was just relaxing. And uh, of course, what did I do? <laughs> I check. I che was checking Gumtree, and I was just flicking through. You know, do the normal arcade machine search. And <laughs> I saw uh, Twin Daytona um, come up, and. It, it was up for only just on 15 minutes, I think. And it was at a ridiculously low price and it was local here in Perth. <laughs> so I'm looking at it going, what? <laughs> and so I dig into it and the yeah, there's two machines. In fact, it looked like from the photos there was only one machine. I thought, oh, okay, for the price, maybe it's just the one machine. But in the description, it clearly says two Daytona machines. Um, so I'm thinking, no, because, the, look, I'm not looking for a Daytona machine. You know, again, you guys that have followed the channel, you know that I actually got Daytona working on my uh, uh, Grand Champion cab uh, running off the PC, so I can't actually play the game. I really wasn't in the market to, to buy <laughs> some twin Dayton Daytonas, but... Um, the, the price was just ridiculous and you can't let that go and they're so sought after and I knew straight away that you know there'd be people all over this um, this listing and of course you know I was expecting well there's probably issues with them and you, you can't tell from the photos of course so I thought well even at that price even if there's you know things to be done and you know boards to be bored or whatever needs to be done rewiring and painting all the rest of it and uh, that's cool you know <laughs> I think uh, I think you for those of you who've been around for a while uh, know that I'm I'm keen to look for anything that's a really a a really good bargain B is original and C if there's work to be done it's quite a satisfying journey to take something that's really sort of busted up <laughs> and, uh, and 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 get it working and and you know all the rest of it so or have a plan for it at least so guys it was I had a one hour window before I was supposed to then basically go out I I thought, look, I, I'm going to miss it. Um, if with the price and everything, I'm going to miss it. Uh, I looked at the contact details. It was via email and not even SMS. I couldn't even call the guy. So I thought, ah, oh, bugger it. I'll just send him an email I'll, and, and just make it easy. You know, when you have these sort of deals, guys, you always make it easy. And I just said, mate, I'll, uh, if it's available, I'll pick it up. Just let me know and I'll come and get it, you know, straight away. Because <laughs> you've got to make it easy. And, uh, and I fired that off and, and, uh, and then went to, to pick up my daughter from, from dancing. So on the way to picking her up, um, I, I get a call from the guy and he's like, oh, thanks, man. I'm, I'm just going through all the calls and, e well, sorry, through all the emails. I'm trying to call people back. Uh, he sounded like he was inundated, which he should have been <laughs> for the price. That's not surprising. So I thought, okay, well, call but why are you calling me then um, and he said oh, I had a guy that's offered to pay more uh, for them but he's coming to have a look um, and you know and seriously guys I was just like cool whatever <laughs> because I wasn't, I wasn't going to fight for the machines it was like a, a really cool deal but there's no way I was going to start bidding up this is not a set of machines that I was actually after in the first place so if I could get it at the right at that that price that it was listed great but um yeah I wasn't going to get into any sort of bidding war or anything so I just said to the guy yeah no no dramas um just see how you go and you know if, if uh he, the guy doesn't want it or whatever then give us a buzz back and I've um, got a trailer I can come pick it up no problem 
That's what I said to him. <laughs> did I have a trailer? Did I have a plan? No. <laughs> no, I did not. So, um, this all logic just got out the window. But again, I, I really just thought that's not going to happen, so it didn't really matter. So I picked up my daughter, um, cruised all the way home, and, you know, I was just got in the garage. <sighs> Stopped the car in the garage, the mobile rings. Guy goes, oh, the guy hasn't turned up. Um, so if you're still interested in it, you, you know, you, you can have it if you can come and collect it. Um, like now because you know he wants to wants to move it on and um, obviously he's got heaps of people wanting it so I was like yeah sure no worries <laughs> I'll be there soon with a trailer cool see you soon <laughs> hang up my daughter looks at me she's like dad you haven't bought another game machine have you I'm like don't ask questions, <laughs> don't tell your mother. Um, so I uh, I sat there thinking, right, well, what the hell am I gonna do? Because my, my wife had actually taken the four wheel drive and um, she was out and wasn't gonna be back until later in the evening. So I only have my car and I don't have a tow ball on my car. So I, I actually can't get a trailer. Um, and you know, if I think, if I thought about it more, I mean, it was just such a rush at the time. I mean, now that I'm, you know, quite cool, calm, and collective, uh, and and thinking straight, I probably, I think the local garage actually allows you to hire like a truck Ute or even Bunnings does, I think. But I think that's really only if you're buying something from Bunnings. But I probably could have done that. I probably could have seen if there was one of those available. Anyway, I did not think of that at all. I. Um, so I thought I'll, I'll stop in on the way and I thought if I do that as well I could just have a quick look at them um, you know and just just make sure you know everything's sort of legit so I that's what I did I, I ended up stopping by the guy's place and um, <laughs> this, then it started getting interesting because he showed me the machines now he's in a house that he's doing up uh, and a really really nice two-story house actually positioned near near the river in perth a really nice place but um he's an owner builder so it's like just a, sort of a, a bit of a mess and things stuff all over the place and out the back the machines were um were quote quote outside and i and i say outside in terms of um <laughs> they were um one was outside under under cover and a sort of a carport the other one was still in the back of a trailer <laughs> it's like a closed trailer like sitting in the back and it was uh, still tied down inside the trailer and the trailer's just sitting on the grass you know like hooked up like this so you're looking in the back of it and, the, and, the, and it's right out of the back and i'm I'm looking at that going okay now i i'm looking at it thinking that logistically this is gonna be difficult and then this is all around the back of his house and there's just a thin driveway down the side of the house like thin and there's no concrete on the drive so it's like sand and stuff <laughs> how, are we, how are we gonna get a car and a trailer up around the back and there was no lights out the back either so because he hadn't rigged all those out so it was actually pitch black so we were looking at it you know with um with the phone light on and anyway and of course i'm still trying to make it sound like it's all no sweat yeah no dramas man looks good yeah no worries and i looked at it and it was all in parts in terms of the seats were off and stuff and and which was the same as the photos and but it had the you know the main daytona header uh that was all complete that wasn't broken i mean some of the plastics on the sides were busted which i which i know they normally are on the daytonas anyway um you know very quick visual inspections there seemed like there was board sets and you know i i it was basically looked relatively complete for the money again it was bang on in terms of um like a bargain so uh, i said yep cool no worries uh so he asked for a deposit in fact he asked for the whole amount <laughs> i said well i can give you a deposit i don't, don't even know who the guy was it could have been just some visitor some random um but anyway i gave him a deposit of course to to secure it and uh and he was cool with that so another a son um uh helped me with this whole um pickup as well so thanks to dylan for, for for doing that so he gave up his saturday night too in fact the guy said look you know i'll help you you know um get them on and stuff so it should be sweet
<laughs> it's like rocking up with the trailer and then we had to like figure out how we got to get this trailer down so we ended up unhooking the trailer and pushing it down the side of the house to, to just position it around there the guy comes down and, and initially it was really difficult to get his attention because he had people over and stuff and and he basically just came down and he says oh yeah so um you got the rest of the money and i was like uh yeah sure so i was like like hand out the money and he goes cool okay no worries well just let yourself in and out um around the back you know because it's just got a gate there so just let yourself in and out and um see you later <laughs> so i was like Oh, okay. I yeah, uh, I, I thought he might sort of uh, lend a bit of a hand, but um, you know, I, I I understand sometimes when you pick up games and that it's actually better if the owner doesn't you know sort of give you a hand in some ways just in case something happens during the handling. Um, but in this case, <laughs> in this case, it was the logistical massive logistical challenges here that was going to be a big problem. So anyway, he just disappeared up, carried on with his party. <laughs> I guess fine from his point of view and and, uh, and my son Dylan just looked at the situation with, with our phone lights on um, and because I didn't bring some lights where I should have originally well I should not know the first time through I didn't actually know of course that I need some lights so so guys I know this is a long story but it was just uh, it, it was a logistical and of course we had to do two trips I've got, I've got back to my place so after that, we got the outside machine. In fact, the outside machine wasn't too bad to move, so that was actually okay. And there was a little bit of concrete around by where it was positioned. So we sort of moved that, slid it over, and got it up on the trailer, cantilever the machine on. And I mean, it was still a lot of effort, guys. And it was starting to get actually pretty cold, start seeing our breath and stuff in Perth. It's in the middle of winter. And then we're off again and we're back into the city and it's just such a trip you know it's 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 just the city part of the trip is really 35 40 minutes without traffic um you know each way so anyway we get back and to get the one out of the trailer and this is where everything stopped because we we you know and again the guy didn't come out when we came back you know he, he, he kept to his word just you know go in and out as you please and we looked at this one in the trailer and we were just like how how are we going to get this out because this, this is so damn heavy the machine and if we bring the machine forward the whole trailer is just going to tip because of the weight and just the whole thing's going to slide we're not going to be able to stop it it's probably going to be extremely dangerous um we couldn't jack it up of course and the, and the weight of it and we we're sort of thinking about moving the machine along a bit to you know move the weight along but it just couldn't get in there. And then we couldn't even get the strap thing off. It was all, you know, uh, ratcheted down. That took like half an hour just to get that off. Well, maybe not half an hour, but at least sort of 15, 20 minutes. So, guys, that was just a, it was an absolute nightmare. In the end, we figured out a way. We sort of, um, we stood on the, on one end to, uh, no, what do we do? So we had to push down from the from the front of the trailer, and then that lifted up the back enough, and we slid some bricks and stuff underneath it to keep it up. And what what the plan was is that if we could get the trailer sort of slightly horizontal, um, that we could then p bring the machine out and cantilever it out as if it was like attached to a car. Um, so that was the plan and we had to chock up the wheels to make sure that it wouldn't slide into the house <laughs> so it's like it was a major mission guys it really was I'm scratching our heads for ages anyway that that ended up being the plan but then then when we actually then got it slid out in that um, once it was jacked up like that th it got stuck like the end of it actually got stuck the, the, there was just no clearance so it's, it's like the trailer actually got smaller <laughs> towards the entrance um, and it was getting stuck on the two top bolts and i think those bolts are actually for the daytona um topper and if i'd known beforehand i probably could have taken those out because they're, they're actually you can actually hand screw them out um, but i didn't know that and they already got jammed on the top of the trailer so we, <laughs> we had the machine stuck in the trailer and we were like trying to bounce the trailer to get it sort of level to lever it out we were going sideways and <laughs> guys this was this definitely was the hardest the most the most difficult pickup um from a logistics perspective so we finally got it free guys and at this point we were really sort of pulling it and just just trying to get it 
just come out of that damn trailer. Let's see, it would have been, um, I think about six o'clock. We were, yeah, half five, I think I may have left originally. So um, I, I think we got back at quarter to 12. <laughs> so, no, it so wasn't later than that. Was it 12 or I even passed? It was good. I think it was a good, um, uh, well, actually six hours, okay, over six hours. Well, yeah, about six hours, guys, <laughs> for this pickup. So, guys, that's what happened. So, how about now, after that very, very long story, how about now I take you outside and let's just take a look at the two machines that I've got. And again, you know, they, they aren't in fantastic quality at all. Of course, they're not, not for the price. But let's take a look and see what we got. Right, so here we have <coughs> machine number one. Uh, actually, machine number three <laughs> there's uh three and four is the numbers on the back and you can see straight away we've got the seat off this first one here um this is the main unit and you can see like the sides are not too bad on this particular one here of course we have the, the broken bit on the corner um a lot of them a lot of them are busted like that screen is all good the controls look look fine, look pretty good. Um, Shift is okay. We come down here. Yeah, we've got some rust and stuff. We can see that the uh, it's a bit of a crack here. If we open this up, have a look. It's going to creak. There we go. And uh, you can see in here, yeah, this top plate's broken. This has come out. But in terms of the board set in here, you can get this off here as well. Uh, we can see that it, it seems to be basically complete. Now we've got some surface rusting going on on this PCB here and this one here. Um, got the controller board, looks pretty good condition there for the uh, steering wheel, I believe. And then we've got the main CPU boards here, this backboard here. Now we have got some cables that are loose loose cables because it sort of looks like there should be something else um, that's connecting up to all of this so that may be missing another another loose one there so yeah um the controls are okay although i think there's a rubber stopper behind here i was just looking at that before that's broken so that's uh busted off there so yeah cosmetically you know, cosmetically it's sort of sound, but there's things that obviously need to be done in terms of electronics. It all looks um, like it's relatively complete. I'm still just worried about this end set of cables, so we'll find out about that. You've got the seat, and the seat had a uh, subwoofer underneath the back, a little speaker there. And I don't know about if you know about this. I mean, there's a, there's several of these Daytona setups which you may have seen with different seats that sort of give, give away the type. And there's I think um, there's a US one, there's um, Japanese one, and uh, and there's the LAI assembled one which sort of uses Japanese parts. And this one this is the LAI one which is most common in Australia. And they had these cool seats, and they're, and they're actually pretty cool. I mean, they're, they're bucket seats. Um, if you're a little bit big, then it's difficult to fit in them. But other than that, they're quite snug. But the cool thing about these um, that not a lot of people know is that there is actually a light uh, through the back here. There's actually a tube that runs through the back. And they're normally busted on them, so they're never really, really lit. Um, but yeah, that's going to be pretty cool to have that lit up as well. The just the machines just look awesome and of course with the topper on on top which i'll show you in a moment so that's machine number one so that will look pretty good this is machine number two and again if we look at it we've got the same sort of issues with uh you know, some major cracking on this one on the side um this one had a little bit of crazing across the top here so a little bit worse condition the steering wheel missing some bolts got a little bit of a tear there um, the monitor surround got a bit of a cut there so this one definitely not as good condition lots of little things to do 
Uh, and also, the main thing in terms of the electronics is that it's missing the main uh, CPU and uh, comms board and so forth that stack under here. But it has got, it does look like it's got all the rest uh, in the back here. Looks all fine. Now there is an interesting thing though. There's this extra board here, uh, which is sort of floating in here. And guys, I don't know what this is because it's not part of the other one. And unless both machines are supposed to have this board populated in there, can't see how it would sit in there. Um, I don't know what these are. So if any of you guys recognise these boards. It looks like there should have been three on here and there's one missing here. Um, that's uh, confused me a little bit. But without that, that board set, if that was out of the way, effectively looking at this is exactly the same as the other machine, except we don't have the, the main board stack in the middle here. So not sure what's going on with that. Again, the boards have some surface rusting. Um, so again, they may not be any good at all, um, may need to be replaced, but you know, we'll try cleaning them up and see what we get. Now, some of these other ones don't actually look too bad, you can never really tell from a visual inspection though. So this one definitely is not a runner, um, <clears throat> the other one may actually work if I you know, clean up the chips and so forth on the boards. I've got two sets, so I still have the opportunity of potentially swapping in the other set as well. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this one definitely requires some more work. Now, the only other thing, and I haven't got the backs of these off at the moment, but I could tell that this, just from the colour of it, this screen has actually been replaced at some point, but worse, it's actually got a broken neck. Um, so, and it's actually a bit of a problem with these machines, is that the metal casing on the back here, um, once you take that off it can drop quite easily and smack the back of the neck board and that's what's happened on this one in fact let me just take this off and I'll show you right so you can see here it's uh, basically snapped off the back there the chassis may be okay uh, probably needs a bit of work but it is complete but basically yeah this tube is no good it's going to need to be swapped out if I go that route um, you can see on the back here there's the Leisure and Allied Industries plate. Um, but if you do look at this, I mean, as I said, this is Australian built being Leisure and Allied, but they did use parts from Japan. We've got like the Japanese writing on here. So it does seem like a bit of a, a mixture. And interestingly, on the top here, it's actually got Outrun. <laughs> So maybe it had outrun in here for a while. Maybe that those other two boards were part of an outrun um, board set, maybe, now that I'm thinking about it. Hmm, curious. Uh, but yeah, other than that, we've got the, the main topper and the topper is, sorry, it's sort of cut down the side there, but hard to see, but the um, that's all actually sweet. There's uh, no problem with the, um, the artwork on that, so that's fine. And we've got the other seat uh, sitting over there. Uh, so yeah, we. I think it's you know again for the price, it's a it's a sensational deal. But I've got some issues. Yeah, no PCB stack. I mean that's they're, they're not cheap, and of course no monitor on here either. And there's other little things even on this one here. You know we've got this tied up with some wire. It almost seems like this this particular one was a bit more of a parts machine, maybe. Um, I don't know. But coming back to this front one, um, who knows? If I uh, can get all these boards sort of cleaned up, who knows if it could be a runner or not um, in its current state. But it definitely does need some work. So there you have it, guys. Let's head back into the theatre. So what do you think? Do you think I made, a, made the right choice in picking those up? Well, in terms of the machines themselves, uh, absolutely. And, and there's no doubt, guys, that you know when you see a, a twin pair of Daytonas, everyone recognises that game, you know. 
Um, it's so, so cool to have. And I think I mentioned that even when I was talking about the Daytona uh, emulation on the PC that I'd set up with the Grand Champion cab. I still, you know, would still be an awesome thing to have. But, you know, guys, I have got this theatre set up now in a way that I was actually pretty pleased with. You know, maybe just a few, just a few subtle adjustments, but everything was sort of fitting in here and I'd covered most genres really well. Now I've got these two, <laughs> not one, but two uh, machines that are 1.5 metres long. How am I going to get it in here? So how am I getting them both in here? So some things are going to have to come out, some things are going to have to be moved if I want to get both of those machines at some point. But the thing is, is I'm going to... Um, it's going to, I think it's going to take a little while. So there's there's a couple of thoughts in my mind here, guys. The first thing is, is that if I can actually get that one working that I've got there, the, the front one, um, I might, and it's, this is a long shot. I, I actually really think that, it's, that it, I'm not going to get them working, or one of them working, even between the two board sets, because there are some, looks definite, you know, surface rust and stuff on some of those boards. They're notorious in terms of, you know, just look at the amount of, um, PCBs that are in there and the cabling and stuff. No wonder these things fail all the time. It's they're really, really actually quite difficult to keep running, and that's why when you see these machines that they're so expensive. You know, they're they're a complex board setup. It's expensive to keep them running <clears throat> when you've got a, a, a you know two that are running. There's probably a bit of money being sunk into them, um, and that's why they tend to sort of go uh, for the money. And also, there's just really in high demand. So thinking about all of that, if I can get one of them going, I might bring that one in, that one machine in for the interim and then start working on pulling the other one apart more thoroughly and starting to do a bit of a restore. I'm not going to do like a really meticulous restore on them, but clearly I've got to get rid of that surface rust and maybe do a bit of paint spraying and think about how I could fix those sides potentially. So they're all things that I'm going to uh, look at doing. So that way I would have one working one in the theatre, the other one I can work on in the garage. Um, <clears throat> that's the sort of, that's the initial plan. If I can't get one of them working, then I'm just going to go with the other plan, which is I'm going to convert both of them guys. Um, and that might seem a little bit mad uh, in that, you know, if you're going to buy these machines, then really just get, getting them back working with all the original parts is really, really what it should be all about. But there's there's been um, there's been some conversion projects and people have hooked into the original controls and then run a PC and then of course you can run uh, all the Model Two system driving games to give yourself some more flexibility, which would be really cool. Of course, you've seen for those of you that have seen my previous episode with the Grand Champion and getting Daytona running on there. Of course, upscaled graphics, which just looks superb. Um, you know, I think the Daytona traffic graphics are starting to wear. I mean, they were just so unbelievable at the time, but now on a very big, you know, on a 26-inch screen, they are very blocky. Um, you notice it nowadays, you, we didn't back then. So <clears throat> I love the fact when you play the game all upscaled on the PC, I actually think it's the right, it, it sort of works really well. Like a lot of other games, I would not do that too. And all the other classic games, as you know, I want CRT goodness for all of that. Um, but yeah, for this, I think there's a real opportunity. Uh, and given the cabinet size, there's people that have actually uh, taken those monitors out and put in 32 inch or 31 and a half inch monitors, uh, widescreen, um, LCDs and um, and they look actually really really good and fit in there fit in there really well. Notwithstanding the fact, of course, that one of my monitors is already dead, so I would need to get a new tube for that anyway. Um, the weight of the machines are just so absolutely massive that you know once you take those monitors out and then put in some LCDs, you're reducing the weight. Not that you're really going to be moving them around a lot anyway, but it, it does help when you do move them. So, so that's a cool thing, but the main thing really is just running on PC. It's going to be reliable. Um, I'm going to hook up to the original controls. You can actually get force feedback working, all the lights working, including, I believe, the leader, uh, the leader lights that are on the um, on the main display. That's all possible and, and has been done by other people. So, even doing that conversion actually might be a fun, uh, you know, project to go through with you guys, so you can see how that can be done. I've had a bit of a look on on the internet. No one's really sort of covered from a YouTube point of view you know actually doing a full conversion from where to go so yeah i think that might be a cool thing for us to uh to go through there's certainly a, there's a bit of a journey there though so i, I don't accept back that to be a 
um, you know happening in, in the short term. There's still a few things I've got to finish in the theatre itself. So now that these machines are outside, we'll leave them out there. Um, I may start attending to those boards though fairly quickly. Uh, I'll bring the board sets in and get them all cleaned up and stuff. Uh, <clears throat> and then I'll look at testing that one machine and see if I can get that going. But in the meantime, <clears throat> really it's about using the theatre as it is, how it's set up now. And I'm going to just enjoy that and <clears throat> I don't really mind if it takes a while to, to get those other machines sorted. It just means I can enjoy the theatre as it is. It's a good setup right now. And then at some point I'm going to have to <laughs> get creative and <clears throat> get those two machines in here somehow. <laughs> God knows how, but I'll work out something. So there you have it. That's uh, the latest pickup. I seriously thought I would not be doing any more pickups. Um, I thought I really got the, the core machines and it was really just now a matter of getting software tweaks and, and board set tweaks and controller tweaks to get exactly how I wanted it. Life's not like that, guys. Always uh, surprises. <laughs> surprises keep happening. So uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for joining me. And uh, thanks for <coughs> subscribing for those that have subscribed. For those that haven't, please do subscribe. And yes, I am trying to get out weekly videos on a Friday. Um, I'm sort of missing the Friday thing. But <laughs> at least this one's come out on the week. And uh, I really do look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, of course, look after yourself, play your games, fix your games and all that good stuff. And we'll see you on the next video. Until then, ciao for now. You must continue. You can do it. You are amazing. The theatre is now closed.